Welcome to section two, all about the fascinating world of monads. Monad sounds crazy, but it's simple once we get going. In this section, we'll first be learning what a monad is, basically a functor with a few additional super abilities. We'll write the IO monad, which at this moment you can imagine as a functor of the return value from an IO operation. Maybe is a monad that handles null or undefined values without having to write null checks every 10 lines. Either monad can be either right or left. It's used to handle errors. And we'll do work with the monads inside actual JavaScript so we can see their practical applications, especially with maybe and either. All right. Here we go. The first video in this section is introducing the monad big sister to the functor. There's so much we can do with a good monad, it's best that we just hit the ground running. In this lesson, we'll learn about the monad. Monad is a functor with some added capabilities. Most type classes we'll see are functors actually. The monad is actually big sister to a lot of type classes. Apply is also a functor, and part of being a monad means that you also have to have the apply spec. Actually, monads come from a large family, and we've already met most of the applicative spec. An applicative is essentially a functor with the of function. We had written that to create functors of a value, Chain is another spec the monad implements. We'll bounce over to some illustrations to bring all this together. It's actually a lot less complex than it seems with the illustration. So let's open our file that had the functor in it. Gonna clean some of the stuff up, take out the static method just for the moment. So the first method that we're gonna write is app app takes an apply of a function. So basically just our functor. And it maps over the function that's inside the container, inside the apply or the functor, the monad. So this is just like fmap, except that we have to take the function out of the container. So the signature for app, say that we have a functor f and f a is our functor, that's this. So basically we're passing in another functor with a function from A to B, and we end up with a functor with B in it. So this is almost exactly like fmap. We can actually drop this signature above fmap and just make a couple small changes. The only difference was that we don't have to take the function out of a container. So now that we have our apply, we can come down here, create a new functor, and we'll just put a string in it. And then we can app to a functor that is holding a function. And we'll just use two upper, because that works on a string. And if we look to the right, we can see that the function was applied to the string inside the functor. And we get identity and compose with app, just like fmap and regular pure functions. Let's hop back to the chart. We need to now get applicative. Applicative adds one method we already know, which is the method of. So let's add of back onto the functor. And remember, this needs to be on the constructor, Applicative requires of, it requires app because it needs to have the apply spec and fmap because it's a functor. So here we get a law called interchange now. If we have an applicative of 100 and then we app over the function f, this is equal to having an, an applicative of f and app to 
an applicative of a function that applies its argument to 100. And if you took a moment to just read this, you can see that app is just working like normal, but the function that we're passing in is calling the value being passed into it. So it's just a little trickery. If we look at the chart again, the last method or condition that we require to become a monad is to implement chain. The chain spec says that chain must be an apply and by definition needs to be a functor. So chain doesn't require the of method. It doesn't have to be an applicative, but it does require app. It has to be an apply. Chain is sometimes called bind. So where app maps to functions that are inside a container, chain maps to functions that return a container. So this is a very common scenario. You end up with nested monads, nested functors, you know, nested arrays. We can simplify chain by actually just calling the function passed in with this dot value. We know this function is going to return a container. The signature for chain says that takes our functor, we give it a function that returns a functor of type B, and then we get a functor of type B. So let's create two functions, MF and MG. So monad of F, monad of G, and basically they will just take a value and return a functor of that function being applied to that value. So it returns a container, and then we'll fmap over mf, and we could see that we get a nested container back, so we'd have to pull the value out to fmap over mg, and then we'd have to take that value out. And this would be equal to just actually having a functor with 100, and then chaining over mf, and then chaining over mg. So we wouldn't even have to unwrap those functors. The applicative function of that can act like an identity for the chain function. So if we have a monad and we chain to the monads of function without calling it, we'll just get the same monad back. So and the reason chains are useful is because we end up a lot with these nested containers. We'll rename our functor to identity because this is basically our basic identity monad. It's pretty standard. And you might say, well, if it's so easy to change a functor to a monad, then why do we even use functors? And the reason is simple. They're just specifications. So if you say you need a functor, as an argument, then you know you could pass a monad in because monad implements chain and applicative, which both satisfy apply, which satisfies functor. In this video, we learned about the monad type class and we wrote an identity monad. In the next video, we'll see how it's possible to represent the result from an impure IO operation using the IO monad.